I'll Jesse, be... I think you're up first. I'm just curious what no you guys in terms of kind of a deep threat. He's averaging like 14 yards a target for you guys. I'm sorry, I missed the question. Uh, I'm just curious what Nelson Aguilar provided you guys in terms of a deep threat. He's averaging like 14 yards a target. That's about double what he averaged in Philly for his career. Well, I think we said uh, all along, we, we think he's a great receiver. He's uh, averaging over 20 yards per catch. And he had a big one against Buffalo, called back another touchdown. He runs great routes. He can play multiple positions. He's a great down-to-down -down competitor, and he's a world champion. So he's added leadership to us, and uh, he has a lot of speed, and he knows how to use it. I've been looking for some answers in the secondary for a while now. From what you saw from Isaiah Johnson yesterday, do you want to get him even more of a look, even when Mullen and Arnett maybe are healthy? Well, we want Mullen to be healthy, and we think Arnett is going to be back on the practice field today. It was good to see Isaiah make some plays. He's still a work in progress, but he is making progress. And uh, we'd like to get Amik Robertson some more snaps as well. But uh, although Isaiah made a couple plays at the end of the game, there's still some things we need to clean up. The game yesterday, but you're probably thinking about the win uh, five and three at the midpoint. Can you just give us your thoughts on the first half and looking forward to the next half in terms of what you'd like to see, whether it be or what your just your thoughts about five, being five and three after eight? Well, we uh, we feel good about winning four games on the road. Five of our first eight were on the road. We think we've been competitive week in and week out. We've adapted to a lot of different circumstances, missing players, missing practice different types of weather and uh, obviously the COVID um, experience has really made things bizarre and different but I, I compliment our team our players our coaches for being able to concentrate prepare hard and compete hard and that's what I'm most proud of but we still have a long way to go um, that, that you is there any way that you can even sense excitement among the fan base the way things are now? No, you don't. You can't sense it. Uh, we have uh, played in front of empty stadium, and uh, we don't go anywhere. But you do, uh, you do look forward to those times. But you really have a strange, um, I don't know, uh, a strange uh, experience going right now, that's for sure. John, can we go back to yesterday's uh, game? I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Carr's leap there at the guard line. Was that he's a pretty good vertical, and he kind of showed it yesterday. What do you think of that? What kind of grade would you give that leap? Have you had a chance to maybe look at the replay? <laughs> You're funny. I uh, I probably give it a nine point five. I don't know. I would like to see him land on his feet for a perfect ten, but it's a great effort. You know, we've talked uh, about Derek scrambling and creating more offense with his legs. I think he's rushed for 10 or 11 first downs now. That's consecutive weeks he's converted a play on his own on third down and 10 plus. Uh, so that's a huge uh, winning edge for us right now is Carr's improvisation and scrambling ability. And as long as he protects himself and protects the ball, that's the most important thing. I was wondering if you could give us any updates on uh, Alec Ingold uh, and Trayvon Mullen uh, and also just uh, maybe a staff report on Trent Brown. I don't have anything to update on Trent. Uh, obviously, Colt Miller is still in the uh, training room. We don't know his status for this week. Trayvon Mullen had a tight hamstring. Um, Alec Ingold uh, is being uh, x-rayed for uh, ribs. We're concerned about him. Uh, we hope to have Damon Arnett back th uh, this week. We're cautiously optimistic about um, Arden Key and uh, Maurice Hurst. We've got a number of players that are coming back, hopefully, from injuries, and uh, we need them. John, with all the shuffling you guys have done on the offensive line this year, how, how important has Rodney Hudson been to just keeping that group together and helping have the success you guys have had? Well, he's, he's, the, he's the leader of the group, no doubt. And um, 
He makes the guys next to him better. He holds everybody to a high standard. The way we uh, meet, the way we practice, and the way we compete. Uh, it all starts with Rodney, and he's having another great season. And it's good to see a healthy Gabe Jackson, and Denzel Good has really stepped up. Our interior three has played ex excellent football, and um, we're hoping that uh, our tackles can return healthy together someday soon. But in the meantime, you got to tip your hat to Brandon Parker. He's played right tackle and left tackle in consecutive weeks, and Sam Young has given us some critical snaps. John, considering you're going up against Denver, who has two very young receivers in Hamler and Judy, has a pretty accurate passer in Locke, a decent offensive line, and a, you know, Bruiser back in Melvin Gordon, a lot of those similarities would also, you would say, go with the Raiders. So how would you say the offense kind of lines up against your defense, and what are some of their biggest threats you would say that you're really looking forward to facing? Well, you just named them. You just named them all off. I give this team a lot of credit. Um, they can come from behind. They've proven it two weeks in a row. They were down big in the Charger game two weeks ago, and Locke brought them back to win. Really impressive. They have firepower to go over your head. They can run it. And then last week, uh, just yesterday against Atlanta, they were uh, way behind, and they made that a one-possession game, and they fought their tails off to get back in it. So we know what we're in for. Fangio's a great coach, outstanding defensive mind. And their offense is young and talented and emerging. John, the third quarters uh, were problematic for you guys, but it seems like you've really gotten that turned around yesterday being in full quarter 14 to 3. What a number of uh, the, anything that you can put your finger on, uh, on, on how you've gotten that turned around, and was that a point of emphasis uh, last year or this year? You know what? I missed that uh, question. I'm sorry. I've got a bad connection here in our. Uh, That's about the third quarter. Third quarter. Oh, well, we were upset about how the second quarter ended. So we decided we better do something about uh, the mistakes we made at the end of the half. Hey, John, what did you see on film as far as your ability to get more pressure on the quarterback yesterday? You know, we just keep coming, uh, Vic. We keep playing hard. Obviously, Balaga got hurt. Uh, they had some rotation at their tackle position as well, and I thought Nassib really played well in spurts. And uh, Max continues to give great second and third effort, and uh, it's just good to see. We got him in some predictable passing situations, which helped. And uh, I just lost focus with all you guys, but I think that had a lot to do with it. Let's do two more, Adam, and then Paul. Coach, what, what does it say about uh, about Tom Cable and what he's been able to kind of you know piece together with the offensive line? You guys have had all the injuries, all the guys in and out, and he still keep uh, plugging away out there. Yeah, really proud of him and the job he's done. Proud of all our coaches, honestly. Tom's uh, done it a long time. You know, Kirby Wilson with the different backs that we've used, uh, Edgar Bennett, the number of different receivers, the emergence of Aguilar. Um, all four of our tight ends are contributing in some way. And defensively, we're playing a lot of people. So we got a great coaching staff. Uh, the big reason we're, we are five and three is we've got a good young team and we've got some, some great teachers and, and mentors, I do believe. Yeah, John, I was just to kind of dovetail on that. Given all the adversity you guys have gone through, whether it was injuries or the, the fines of the COVID and everything else that comes through it, you guys are five and three at the midway point. How do you explain or how did you get there to this point besides just talent? And, and Well, you know, adversity sometimes is a perception. You know, there's a lot of perception out there. And then the reality is here is we, we really like each other. And we respect the job that we've done against COVID. We have fun coming to work. We have fun competing together. It's a tight group of players and coaches. And it's, it's a great environment. I wish you guys could see it. But uh, we have a lot of confidence in the next man up. We've got a good young team. And it was a competitive training camp. We had a hard time cutting down to 53. The guys that made this team deserve to make this team. And they're, they're going to be asked to play. And... Um, like I said, it's a, it's a combination, I think, of good, young, emerging players, competition, and attention to detail. Great. All 
All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Sorry about the connection.